yo, this is another episode of the Steven from the Old Time Podcast. Listen to my dad, he's awesome. Welcome to a new episode of Steven from the Old Time Podcast. I am your host, the Ayatollah of Hip Hop, the whole damn show, the Rated R Podcaster, the Revolutionary the architect, everything all combined in one. We bring you nothing but the best in hip-hop, wrestling, all that jazz. With my co-host tonight, he is the producer of the year, the video editor of the year, the European champion. That's a lot champion. of titles. That's <laughs> a lot of titles. <laughs> but you deserve I'm not, it. I'm not that good. You're not that good? Malenko, how are you doing? Oh, it's sucky editing. I'm good, though. Um, I'm good. I'm good at you. I'm good. Did you did your house get flooded? No, no. And man, a lot of people got flooded. Huh? They have Montreal. They woke up and they had a new, a new pool. <laughs> know what I mean, they had a new pool, indoor pool, bro. Got you by the fucking city of Montreal. Jesus, it's, it's crazy how we never got that much amount of rain in the history of Montreal. We weren't prepared for it. <laughs> no, we're not prepared for nothing. Us, we're not pre- prepared Zero. for nothing. Zero, absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's snow, the first snowfall, whether it's an explosive pause rainfall like we received, uh, anything that happens here, we're never prepared. You, did you see where you work right across the street from where you work? Yeah, I I parked on second. I parked on second floor. I'm not dumb. I knew that's going to be a dude. When I passed by that thing, w- water was all over the place. You just saw, you thought it was boats, but it's actually cars just floating around. It looked so like the- Italy. It looked like fucking Italy. With You know when they have those canals and the fucking? Yeah. Exactly the same. They were just floating around. People and, now, and now to get to work, you, you there's a couple of places that are blocked off because there's still water. Yeah. Well, they, from that, from that parking lot that got flooded, they're still towing cars. Like really? That. Yeah, they're still towing cars. You see all the cars, the windows are all fucked up because there's water inside. Nobody opened the car in five days. So all the humidity in that. So the car is f- all all fog. Disgusting. But yeah. For the people and around I feel bad. For the people around the world that are listening and have no idea what we're talking about, Montreal got uh hit with the biggest rainstorm in history uh, of, mm-hmm. uh, of Montreal. And we weren't prepared, obviously, because Montreal is never prepared for anything. Uh, and yeah, it was a complete fucking disaster. I got a bit of water in the basement. Not too much. No way. Yeah, wow. but yeah, but not too much. Right next to my room. You know where my room is. Yeah. Right next to the door, there's the hot water tank. And there was a bit of water that came in. Again, it rained for so long mm-hmm. with so much water that it just started coming into the house because all the water outside was kind of like slanted uh, towards the house. So it started to come in. But a bunch of people around my area got flooded. Like their basement was like completely oh, everybody. pool. Yeah, same, same. And so much people been affected for it. So I felt for them. And, um, and ima- yo, you need to pick your, all your stuff from your, your room. You need to pick it up now because... That's going to happen often. I think this winter is going to start raining. It's not going to start snowing yeah. anymore. So imagine if that happens during the, the winter. Oh, Oof. in the house, it's done. It's in the house. Over. And next day, it's like minus 10. Ooh. Minus 20, minus 30. Forget 10. Yeah, it's going to be something. I just, I got to do something with the room in the basement. I kind of got to raise it up. I got to raise things off of the floor. <laughs> you need to raise everything up on the floor. You know me. As soon as... It started raining. The first thing I did was come into my room. I lied on the floor like this, and I was mm. looking to see if water was coming into my come room. They, they, about it's it, game huh? over. If water comes into this room, it's game over for me. It's It was a nice life. Thank you. Uh, thank you for everything. I'm out. Um, let's get into it. Uh, we have a couple of things we want to talk about, of course. Uh, Malenko, let's start it off. You're... Look... I know you're excited. I, I sent you, you this album to listen you, to it. You sent me this album. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be honest with you. 
<laughs> it was a very difficult listen. Jesus. But I want you to kick it off. This is your album. This is the welcome to a new episode of the Malenko Show. Kick it off. What are we talking about? What are we going to fucking review? We are talking about artist JPEG Mafia, and the album is called I Lay You Down. I Lay Down My Life for You. The most JPEG goddamn fucking title you can get. But um, this is his 14 songs, 41 minutes. I think it's maybe his eighth full length album. Um, JPEG Mafia has been. I think he is one of the legends of the underground, I really think. Um, of the so, underground? Yeah, for okay. sure. Because he's not mainstream. He's not mainstream, but he does have a huge fan base. He has a huge fan base, but he has his own lane. And I think he's one of the pioneers. So um, this is new album. So last album I enjoyed a lot to Tony and 2023 scaring the hose with Danny Brown. Yes. It was I, my top three of the year. I couldn't get into it. You and Steven. Steven bought me the CD because mm -hmm. he wanted me to get into it so much. And after a couple of more listens, I did enjoy it a bit more. But yeah. there was a balance between Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia on the album. Yeah. So he's always been there and doing his own production. And expanding all the time on his sounds on everything he's does he does album through album you know from every album you see the level coming up so this one i'm always intrigued when he comes out with something uh and this one man it just caught me, caught me off guard I, I enjoyed this album a lot a lot and i thought you might i thought you might the only thing that i think is gonna be a really uh, a step back for you it would be all those metal sounds and the the rock and all that i don't think you like that it's i don't or think more... it's that it's no? not, it's not that yeah there's something it's more the electronics uh look if we're, if if you're going to ask me my opinion right off the bat uh there's i find there's too much going on in this there's mm -hmm. a just there's just too much going on. Your point, electronic, uh, electronical music, metal, rock sound, which is fine because there's a lot of artists that use that, integrate that in their 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 music, and it works for them, and it and it doesn't work for them. Now, with this is, I find that the music is too much in your face. It's too loud. There's too much going on at the same mm -hmm. time that it kind of, first of all, with the voice too. Mm -hmm. And the screaming, uh, he gets all, he has a lot of different tones also in the voice. It just I find it doesn't it's not it's not fitting. It doesn't yeah. suit the album well, mm -hmm. and I just find that this is I don't want to say too weird, but you said it best. There's a fan base for this. Of He's, course, he, I mean a lot of people like this. This is this is not a small thing. I think it's not that difficult to listen to. I it's just oh. you think so, M Malenko. So you you told you called me and you said JPEG Mafia. I'm like okay, I'm gonna go listen to it. Mm -hmm. It's not my cup of tea. Let me try it. Malenko wants me to do it. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I put it on and I took it off after the second song. I couldn't. Oh, you crazy? I oh, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. Wow. Just I am. Yesterday is where I was able to press play again and mm -hmm. I tried my best to go through the album but it just it just isn't for me it's wow. look maybe I'm getting older maybe <laughs> I like I don't know I like simple mu I don't, I don't but know you like triple X from Danny Brown I loved triple X from Danny Brown but it was so well executed and you know what me and Steve reviewed it on the first no, on the second season of the All Time Podcast, we mm -hmm. rev we we did our top of the decade, and when Danny Brown's Triple X came out, we played it. We were still working at HMV. We played it, and I was the first one of the two that said, "Fuck, I don't like this. This is weird." Oh yeah, I'm surprised by that. Okay, well, I think this album is is not that difficult to hear. To, to listen to i don't think it's that difficult i think there's there's well like uh, jpeg ultra with uh denzel curry i think that's the most like more hip-hop 
type of like all around hip hop person can listen to that. No? It's the best song in the album. You think so? Yeah. It's the best song in the album, along with the song, and I have to hear uh, "New Black History" with Vince Staples. Okay, but you don't like "Ex Military." No. Wow. With the it's yours, and uh, no, it's yours. It's tears. With the tears, the sample. And you don't like those. Oh my god! Just the progression of every song and how he keeps the beats interesting and. The this guy has bars the whole the whole thing. I find it's he just can't bars. Rap, I can't. Find, oh my god! And it's that's just bars all over the place. And this is the difference between Triple X because when Triple X came out, it was new, it was fresh. You it don't no think he has bars? No. No. No, I find. Oh it, my god! I, I don't find the. I don't find he has bars. I find first of all, I think wow. the people that listen to JPEG Mafia. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to it for the for the for the the lyrics. They listen. It's to all it for, lyrics. They listen to it for the for no. the jumping up and down. It's, it's the mix of two. No, it's the mix of two. It's the, Steven. It's, he doesn't it, have bars. It's Come festival on. music. JPEG Mafia to me is festival music. This is the type of music that you go to the festival. It's a live concert. This live, this live probably sounds great. It's festival, you pop ecstasy, you take shrooms. Uh, what are the no, other drugs? No, no, no. Uh, it's not what's that, the no. sniff gasoline, no, and you just jump up and down, you crowd surf, there's beach balls flying everywhere. This is Oceaga, this is uh, Lollapalooza, uh, mm -hmm. this is that. It's festival music. It's not <laughs> earphone enjoyable music to me, but that's my opinion, which is fine. You and piss me off. I'm, I'm you pissing piss you me off. off. You piss me off. How much food sick gave to this? I don't even know. I don't Did even give something? a shit because that guy listens to the album once and then ends up. He listens to the album half the album and then gives it a score. The album will come out on Friday and then Friday afternoon there will be a fucking score. Makes I'll absolutely check. no sense. I'm checking right now. I don't even know if he. I'm checking right now. Look. The people that like this JPEG Mafia are the people that go read the Pitchfork reviews. This is something Pitchfork would give a fucking 9.7. Because I mean, it's, it's so, already critically acclaimed by everyone. Because it's so out of the box. I, I it's saw different. All kind of shit. Yeah. It's different. It's uh, experimental. And I love my experimental music. Arm & Hammer, their albums, uh, Quelle Chris... Uh, like those guys put out really good experimental mm -hmm. music LP, like that was exactly, experimental that's music. That's why I think you would like this. I don't know. I I don't understand why you don't like these. These beats are hard body. Every beat on here was crazy. I'm Every gonna, beat. I'm like, this guy is serious. I'm gonna product. I'm gonna tell you to listen to an album, okay? And I was uh, so excited to tell you this, okay? Mm -hmm. Camuteo from the yeah, Weatherman. Camuteo. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Put out an album back in the mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. uh, 2008, nine, mm -hmm. called King of Hearts. Yeah. Okay? That album had so much rock, metal, kind of a style like the way JPEG is doing it, but it was done so well mm -hmm. and it was so different at the time. The singing on it, it kind of was layered and and produced correctly that there was not so much going on. Like it didn't sound so over the top. It was mm -hmm. it was more of a interesting factor to the sound. Okay. To the mm -hmm. listeners out there, Camuteo, King of Hearts. Yeah, okay. Really Rest in album. peace, Camuteo from the Weatherman, who passed away from lung cancer. And was still smoking cigarettes while he was performing on <laughs> stage. Okay. If you are a fan of JPEG Mafia, if you are a fan of that experimental loud music in your face, listen to Camuteo. Hold the Floor by Camuteo. Fucking incredible yeah. music. Uh, I, 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 like, I like that more. And I find... Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it now. King of Hearts, Camuteo album, 2010. My bad. There's like 
There's 18 songs, 52 minutes. Fuck, I remember this album, man. It was so, there was something so different about it uh, when it came out. And I find that that style in hip hop, not that it wasn't heard about, it just wasn't being done. And it kind of wasn't being, there wasn't any artists that were taking that chance with it. And now I find it's kind of easier to be like, I'm going to do this type of sound. And it's just not it's just not interesting right now. Maybe because I'm getting older, I don't know. But I want to know what you think. I want to really know what you think about this album because this is you've told me you told me flat out uh -huh. that this is one of the best of the year. Wrong? Yeah, this is I uh, for me. I think I the 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 main thing uh, that flips it for me. I think is. Because of the flips, it keeps my interest high for the album. And uh, JPEG is such an interesting guy. The way he, he rhymes and he he always like the like when he says that like he, he he's gonna wrap you in a fucking in a sheet or whatever that he says on uh, <laughs> on the other song on the uh, ex military. Like he he's so vivid. He's so vivid and he, he, he goes through all the darkness and then he can give you like the crazy party bars. It's the same aspect that I like about Danny Brown. He can go so deep in one bar and then for the second one, he's going to go all over like party. But he can show you the bad side of all the partying and having uh, all those drug issues. Um, so, I mean, the production on this is dark and hell is hot that song with the the brazilian funk mm -hmm. sample you don't like that beat i just find Oof. there's too much going on at the same time i get lost yeah. in the i get lost in the music melenko is it a car album is it a headphone album it definitely is a, a headphone, headphone. you it's find it's headphone. more of a headphone album oh yeah there's too many there's so many layers and switches and everything it, i think he's such a interesting producer he's really he one of the he produced the whole album no, not everything. He did some on Collapse. You know where I, I think he would shine mostly on? Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Trap Beats. No. No. No? No, no. Because he... No, because he, he's too... No, he can't. Dude, he can't put him on a Trap Beat, this guy. He screams and do transition like... Ugh! He, ju he just fucking... He does... He like... That's where it loses is... me. That's where it loses me as well. Uh, just as much I don't like death grips and he's yeah exactly and a lot of, when when Peggy started like a lot of people compare him to uh, I can't uh, do death, the grips. death grips that's why the, the song is ex-military that's the first album okay. of death grips yeah death grips another artist I can't get into people love that shit I mean I don't think it's for every I don't know. I think our listeners are people that enjoy all kinds of music. So I think this. I hope it just puts a, a level is a higher level me for than any other ground artist for me. Okay. For me, like if I I and that weekend we listen to the Vic Spencer, to the Flea Lord, and all that. So coming down from Flea Lord and all those guys to jump into this is a big change up. I don't think a lot of people do, do those change up like that, but yeah, but I, I like find how I can't find the, all kind of music. I find this year also you're you're more uh, like like the schoolboy cues, like you're like I find you're gravitating more towards sounds. Like I always that. did. I you always, always did. did, but I find more mm -hmm. this year, and I think there is a lot more of the artists that like the future, the future and the Metro booming. Another album that you you still love to this day. Yeah, yeah, I still listen to that album. Oh yeah, yeah, DJ Peg man, I'll go and I'll, I'll give it a nine out of ten for me. Wow, uh, it's a nine out of ten for me. I love this. I love this. I love the way he, he goes uh, really really high up, and then he he comes down, give you like a good transition, like either either on or off the drugs. That song is beautiful. The way he just raps on that and yeah, it re it reminds me of peak Danny Brown. This album, 
And I think for someone that wants to get into JPEG Mafia, I think this is one of his best album to start with because it's easier to listen to than this than the other album. If I go listen to the other albums, I won't get into it. No, you will not like it. You like Veteran, you will never pass through that. Really? Yeah, never. I I just I just have to try. I, did, I I just have to say I did try it, and it's just not for me. It's not for me. So I'm I'm gonna go look. You want a rating for me from the first one listen and a half? I gotta give it a two on ten. Two? Oh my! It's 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 oh, it's it's, it's not for. I I me so I, pre- I prefer the bad Ghostface album that came out this year that I can actually go through. Then this, oh, you <laughs> fucking annoying. Wow. What do you want me to tell you? Wow. You were, you're a fucking mook sometimes, man. Huh? <laughs> well, you're such a mook sometimes for this shit. I Jay love Pig it. Mafia too. I fucking, ugh. Okay, um, pass to the next album because I... Because you're in a bad mood? Okay, oh my let's, God. let's talk about another album that puts me in a good mood that when I wake up in the morning, this is the album that <laughs> I put on and I just drive to this album and di- and we're going to talk about Larry June doing it for me. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Look, you want to talk about positivity in music. <laughs> you want to talk about driving around music. You want to talk about a guy that's coming out with albums consistently twice a year. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't oversaturate the market. But just puts out just quality, enjoyable music. I'm not even going to say that it's phenomenal music. I'm not going to say it's over the top 10 on 10 music. This is just really enjoyable mood music. Yeah. Like, you talk about a guy that just talks about getting money, having money, spending his time investing his money, okay, Mm -hmm. drinking orange juice, Riding around in his car collection, mm-hmm. being in love with women. This is one of the first times yeah. he's really singing about a relationship. About yeah, a, full song uh, singing on here. He's yeah. he's always kind of trying to do something different. Mm-hmm. He's he, he's using his vocals different, the tone of his voice, mm-hmm. the singing aspects, like just on songs like "Meet Me in Napa." Morning Yo, calculations. What's what's Napa? What's Napa? Do you know Meet Me at Napa? What's Napa? It's a place? Of course, absolutely. Napa, Napa Auto Pro? Napa Auto Pro. It's true. Or actually I don't know. Hold on. That no, like I don't even know. Napa <laughs> Auto Parts. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I said it's the Napa Auto Pro, right? Meet me it's, at Napa it's, Auto. It's a, it's actually Napa is a county in California. Oh, there you go. Sorry for all our American listeners. I have no idea what goes on elsewhere in the world, but my hometown. Not uh, yeah. So, like, it's not even an album that we can spend so much time talking about. It's just, just really good music, really enjoyable music. And I'm going to keep saying that. And it's just like Breakfast in Gold Coast, a phenomenal just song just to sit back mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. – it's also background music. Right, a lot, yeah, yeah. When Larry June is the type of artist that, when you wake up in the morning and you have absolutely no idea what you want to listen to, if you pick any Larry June album, you're you're good. You're, you're good. You're gonna completely finish the album. You're gonna go through all the songs. He doesn't put out long albums: thirty-eight minutes, forty-two minute albums. Uh, look. Remember Currency when Currency started? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He reminds me of what Currency was doing. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. What did I tell you when when um you told me to listen to this? I don't remember. You remember? I went like, "Ah, oh, do we really have to talk about this album? I don't want to review this album. I didn't want to review it, and I was not expecting much. And that's before I listened to it, and I was." I didn't like it. I, I didn't want to do it. And then I put it on. I put this album on. Because I thought that he's going to again do the same thing and the same beats. And he's not going to get my 
attention anymore because I expect I know I already know what to expect, but it still surprised me. It still surprised me. I, I like this album a lot. Larry June is the artist that if you don't want him to hear him do the same things, make him have different producers on the album. The producers saved for me the album. I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you that I think Cardo. The- the production on here and Cardo just got one one B. I and every time they link up it's just it's really yeah. good. Yeah. And um Jake One got beats on here as well. Jake One. He just produced that freeway album the second the second time they got together. Uh mm-hmm. Alchemist is on here too. No? Moneybag? No. No, that's so. um what's his name? What uh, a song. Cooking Soul. Yes, Cooking Soul. Fucking amazing producer. Cooking Soul and Larry June albums, when they get together and they do those seven, eight song mm-hmm. EPs, mm-hmm. fucking some of the best Larry June music. Uh, what's the song where he's singing? A Little While. Yes, I think it's a little while, yeah. Let me see my... Uh, no, it's Tinson Beach. A Little While is the ballad, is the romantic song. Yes. It, it's really good. I mean... A li- for me, the main problem for this it was the opener. I didn't like you get a the Uncle Erm. He always does that though, like always. But then Magnum PI and Morning Calculation, I wouldn't put them higher on the list. I I didn't like them two songs as an opener. Really? Yeah, I didn't like them as an opener. Magnum PI is uh, I, and when I popped it in. First two songs, I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, that's exactly why I didn't want to listen to this Larry June and review it. But then when a Little While came in, he did the full romantic song. And it's all G-Funk. It's all soulful beats. It's the usual, okay? The usual, but they're well done. Harry Fraud is on the third song. Mm -hmm. Morning Calculation is probably one of my favorite uh, uh, Harry Fraud beats lately. Right? Yeah. And and I, I like, like when they beat. link up because he gives them good beats. Yeah, so a little while it's okay. I thought it was it was fun. Sing some beach, that's the Bootsy Collins. That's his on his Bootsy Collins. He's uh that's P he just he's just a player on here, man. So oh. it's funny. Eh? It's funny, yeah, that song. He's a Mac. Yeah, he's Mac and he's just macking around. Larry June has such great influences. Mm-hmm. Like just, just the way he breaks up his bars. Like you could get a little bit of that E forty in there. You get a little bit yeah. of that, a little bit of Mac Dre. You know, yeah. the the Oakland too short. The yeah. uh, San Francisco style, uh, hyphy style of rapping. Yeah, exactly. It. That's exactly it. From San Francisco, so that's why. Um... Then real talk. I like I like real talk. It's an okay song. Mm-hmm. Uh, three piece ride. Nah, 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 nah. That song is is it goes. I love that. For me, the highlight is all at the end. Like right after meet me at Napa, love and wh- where I'm going and meet me at Napa, they're okay for me. But then breakfast in Gold Coast till the end, till money bag to me. That's that's his best. Imported couches is what I like about uh, Larry. So, Another, yeah, it's 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 classic Larry June and he style. Did a cleaning cleaning my spot is an interlude. It's a really jazzy, smooth drum beat, and it's just him cleaning his spot. But the picture he paints and the way he presented to you, you see everything, you know. So it, it's really fun. It, it's really funny. But that's the great thing about Larry June is every song you get, he paints you a picture that it, you you visually see what he's doing. Yep. He's always talking about going somewhere, what he's doing when he gets there. Mm-hmm. It's he's that type of storyteller. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, your final? I'm gonna give it a seven. Uh, same score, same score for me. Seven out of ten. Everybody that listens to hip hop. Whether you listen to old school hip hop, new school hip hop, trap, uh, fucking underground, mm-hmm. uh, that JPEG Mafia sound, Larry June has to be in everybody's rotation yearly. I exactly like yearly. Man, I wish I had a Cadillac for this with the big bass. Oh, I I wish I was mo- I had money. 
mm-hmm. wish I knew how to invest my money correctly. Mm-hmm. I wish I had a bunch of cars. Okay. I wish I ha- we had nice weather so I could just drive all day and not give a shit about life. It's mo- yeah, his motivation songs are pretty are pretty good. Even about being time. a father. Yeah, the last song Money Bag is really cool as well. Like I don't know. Um just wanna I just wanna say Pro Dillinger once again put out a project. I would say this is the appetizer to what's going to be coming. Mm-hmm. I'm still waiting for that Future Wave mm-hmm. album, that one and two Future Wave that he's that he spoke about. Mm-hmm. Um, seven song EP with Bucky Luger. Don't feed the animals. We don't have to spend too much time on it. This is a great appetizer that Pro Dillinger has served to us. Don't feed the animals. Uh, fully produced by Bucky Luger. Songs with Vic Spencer, Danielson, uh, Jamal Gasol. It's just fucking great to listen to. Yeah. It's... This is clothesline music. This is the <laughs> type... This is clothesline music. Like you have no idea it's gonna come at you, and you just get mm-hmm. completely clotheslined. Okay, the hard hitting bars from Pro Dillinger, the featurings, man, the Danielson. Don't these two go so oh, well man. together? Yeah, pause. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a great song. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, just life. The first, the first song that that fucking life again. Pro Dillinger always gives you a, a a life lesson a lesson he touches your soul with what he says you feel that it's coming from here when pro dillinger raps he's speaking yeah. from the heart from the soul he's phenomenal at doing that and just a life song man like life wolves out that gives you that whole like what i'm going through yeah i like that uh, that beat too with the Fuck. bucky Bucky destroyed that thing. That whole that whole piece, the um, like the shimmer on on life and and the the hard kicks and all that. It's just great song. And another thing that Pro does super well is the hooks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And let me say, one of my favorite songs on this is "Smoke" with Vic Spencer. <laughs> they complement I... themselves so well on this. I yep. didn't think. I really didn't think that, like, that Vic Spencer would be on this, but he it's it's so well done. You get a different flow of Vic Spencer. We just heard uh, the last album mm-hmm. it was boom bap in your face. This is just Vic Spencer sitting back and just giving you some fucking hard hitting bars. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, and then ending off the album with true, just. An, another great way to 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 end off an album and and pro giving you those life lessons. Uh, look, we'll give it a score. I'm gonna give it an eight. It's an it's a it's a great AP, EP to listen to. Same, same. I'll I'll give it an eight. It's 19 minutes, but isn't there's no waste on here? No, no. He doesn't. No waste at, at all. He doesn't give waste music. He just he's just getting hungry and hungrier with these Matt, albums, man. I'm just saying. It really is. When that album with Future Wave comes out, we're done. It's game over. Just take the rest of the year off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, next album. That's a, another appetizer. You find you think it's an appetizer? Of course. It's ten songs. Of course, this is not an album. This is another appetizer. Just throw it there. Benny. Ten, it's ten songs. Is Benny the fucking butcher? Ten songs. He does. He does it like this. Benny el Canicero. El Canicero, aquí está el Canicero. Summertime Butch. Yeah. Can I start can I start this one off? Yeah, was he? I enjoyed this one more than everybody can go. Ahí comenzó con la cosa puta, There you go. I'll take it away. This episode, huh? I fucking I got nothing more to say to you, but god damn. This episode, you're surprising me. You Why? like this better? This I'm is an appetizer. I en- so this I'm a lot to like it better. One verse butch, bro. Jeez. So what I did was yes, and I like the one verse butch. What a song! It's 
<laughs> Dude, is is one of the best songs on, on here. Okay, let, 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 let's. He I'll goes in my... right away. He goes in right away. But that's the Benny I want to hear. He goes in right away. And you know mm-hmm. what? He started off the album. His last two albums, he didn't really start off the albums the way I wanted him to. He it's started true. off this super well. It made me want to get more into the album. It didn't feel like the album just finished. The Holyfield line on that first down is is great. It's great. I'm not gonna say that this is vintage. No well, vintage. He, he's this hasn't been long. He's been mm-hmm. giving us albums, but it's not vintage. Uh, Benny the Butcher, but it's Benny the Butcher. I like to hear. I'm not saying it's great, Benny the Butcher, but it's those hard punch lines, those hard oh, bars. I think it's great. I think it's great, Benny the Butcher. I think everything he lays down. I think I, I don't know why people. I mean, this is coming off his last album that got so much mixed critics that I, I, I it still surprised me why he get all. He's just talented, the guy, man. He's just so consistent, and every verse. He doesn't let off. He doesn't let off. He never lets off. Benny the Butcher is very talented. It's how he gives you the albums. It's the structure, yeah, of the songs and the beats he shows. But other than that, like his verse, he always has the same flow. Okay. He mostly raps with a couple flows, but he, it's how he ends his bar. He only ends his bar and how he aligns all his um, um, syllab. syllables. Like, all his syllables. All French well Canadian. Placed We're and sorry. The best French Canadian accent. <laughs> uh, s- since René Lévesque. <laughs> René Lévesque had a fucking crazy French accent. I was going to say Patrick Roy, man, whatever. Patrick Roy was Martin Brother. But those guys now talk more in English. Of and course. they look weird talking in French. But Of course. Whatever. Uh, what was I was talking about? I the know. syllables. It's just, yeah, the way the patterns and the syllables, the way he, he, he structures his verse. Man, like he has some of the verses best patterns. On here. Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. Oh man, it's just, it's it's what I want to hear from Benny. And something that makes me super happy about this is we didn't get any, um, Hip Boy beats. Yeah, well, you don't you don't rock with Hit Boy that much. Wait, hold on a second. Burden That's of why proof. It... I rock okay. with. Okay. The beats he chose for everybody can go. I don't rock with. With that being said. Don't oversaturate us with the same producer. It's going to get weak. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, but, it's all in house for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I just like the way it flows. On the first listen, I wasn't like, wow, this is phenomenal. No, I'm still not at that. I just really like what I'm listening to. It's it's mixtape Benny the Butcher. It's mixtape. It's an appetizer. He's, he does it flawlessly. That's, the for me, the main point of this whole album that i realized is like how easy he does it uh barely features and no any yeah, rick structure Hyde. of a song you can do it rick Hyde, el camino uh and i can't remember who else fuego you base yes i like fuego but i like the the grimy like i smoke 40 mm-hmm. cigarettes a day type <laughs> and i'm and i'm rapping in a fire yeah uh type flow no but like nightfall Kitchen Table, uh, The Warehouse 3, we've just mentioned, mm-hmm. v- One Verse Butch, The you Most. like the outro? Higher? Yes. I like that. I like Powerful it. song. I mean, that's one of the most like powerful Benny songs I heard in a long time. He's painting you a picture. Benny's phenomenal at painting pictures, by the way. Storytelling, painting pictures, uh... It's like remember India mm-hmm. on uh, mm-hmm. a friend of ours. Of course, I remember. Yeah. Um, it... I think they they make you like you just said it, Benny. People think he's new because he just gave. Like people are discovering him since the J Cole feature, mm-hmm. so he's still like new, right? For rap game, like, but for us that listen for so long. To me, so long. He started to sound like a, like, a, like a mature hustler, like someone that really actually did it and came up and make and made it in rap game, like a Jay Z, like a Nas, 
like a scar face like it, it makes me feel that matureness about him like he's top level at this point and he rapping easy like that Monica, so i said this i said this uh many times Tana Talk 3 mm -hmm. to me is at the level of reasonable doubt. When reasonable doubt came out in 96, mm -hmm. people, it wasn't over the top. Not everybody was enjoying it as much. It wasn't yeah. like, wow, this is a fucking, this is a classic. This is a phenomenon. This mm -hmm. album, like people in the last 10 years, 15 years, that's when people were really saying, well, fuck, reasonable doubt is better than Elmatic. People were saying that. Uh, mm -hmm. People were saying how great Reasonable Doubt was and what it did for hip hop. I think Tana Talk 3 is going to be in five years from now at that same level. I think so too. Tana Talk 3, mm -hmm. that is probably one of the best drug dealing handbook Bible of in hip hop. Up there with clips, clips. Uh, Lord Willing and Hell Hat No Fury. Up there with the Reasonable Doubt. Uh, up there with so many albums, so many albums. It's just it's it doesn't get the recognition it should when it comes out. But over mm -hmm. time, in five ten years from now, it's gonna be at it's gonna be at one of those high levels, man. And people are gonna go back to it and they're gonna start talking about it again. Oh yeah. Um, the one gripe I have with this album mm -hmm. is that it's called "Summertime Butch" and there's no summertime anthems on here. Zero. Yeah, and the girl <laughs> asked, uh, "It's Armani." She asked her to do the summertime, and it's still a banger. It's, still, <laughs> it's more, it's mostly a banger. You can't put that in a barbecue. People look at you strange. Like, yeah, it's but too the, heavy, bro. Yeah, this is just a storytelling. Yeah, but if you dark. really would have done a like summer song, people would have been at him. It would have destroyed the fucking thing. You know how. Grisella you know what I thought are. we were gonna get from this album, a trap yeah. album, a Benny the Butcher trap album, but that dark trap like that when he ha he's with Armani Caesar mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that album when mm -hmm. he do when he does and he does that trap flow, but the, the, it's very dark the beat. Yeah, I like I love when he does that trap flow, like on Everybody Can Go, the song like, with Armani is yes, which is one of the best songs on the album, or like mm -hmm. uh, Conway. The Sunny. Yeah. Yeah, the Sunny. Yeah. That type of trap sound. Um, What's your note? Uh, I'm going to go with a 7 on 10. For me, it's a 7.5. I When I first listened to it, uh, I was going to give it a 6, 6.5. Mm -hmm. But as I'm, I continue to listen to it, uh, I'm definitely... Uh, it's the attention to detail. Like those second verses sometimes on those songs, man. Oh. He just flips and then you get so many different bennies on here. You have every, you have the mafioso beat. You have the hustler came up, coming up. You have the game song. You have like all those. The the interludes are funny. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think yeah, seven point five, seven point five out of ten for me. So, since Benny's, we've been Benny fans for for a while. Uh, I'll go out and say that I don't give a shit. Uh, he's been putting out music. We've been reviewing his music for a while. Uh, we just spoke about Tana Talk 3. Oh, shit. Let's do uh, uh, Benny El Calnicero, Benny the Butcher, top five Benny the Butcher albums. All time, bro. Top five All Benny time. Butcher album. S All time. Like the t-shirt over here. Speaking, that's a very nice t-shirt. It fits you well? It fits me like a glove. But, but dude, this is... Top quality T-shirt. Huh? You're Top welcome. Quality. <laughs> you're you. welcome. Thank you. Uh, okay, so you're ready? Was he? Oh, you want me to go first? Fuck, I'm just writing them. Oh, let's go five, five. You go tell your five. I'll go five. You tell your four. I'll tell my four. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, number five. Mm -hmm. Is going to be a friend of ours. A friend of ours. Wow, I love that album. I love that album. That was my my six. That was my six. My five for me is everybody can go. Huh. Yep. I I really I mean a friend of ours for me was some of those uh features. 
the, some of the features are, are verses I don't like. Everybody can go. It's a I can listen to that no problem every day. I I I it's I don't know understand that bronze song. Mm -hmm. It's either a hit or a miss for me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, number four, uh, butcher on steroids. Mm, you went underground, huh? You went underground with it. That's M a great album. Remember when we went to the show mm -hmm. in Boston, and I yep. said, Malenko, stay here. And yes. I ran to the the merch booth, and I came <laughs> back, and I had the fucking butcher on steroids in my hand. It was the happiest day of my life. And it's bent, by the way. Huh? The corners of the album are all bent. Yeah, that's like they, there's some smooth songs in there. Man. Oh, fuck. Benny when, versus Carlito. When they rap Ooh. on that Capone Noriega song. The instrumental, yeah, yeah. Oh, blood money, blood money. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that for, was for man. me. Um, this one is. I think I'm cheating putting this one, but the plugs I met. Um, the plugs I met. I think it's seven. At number songs. four. Yeah, it's number seven. For, it's uh, seven songs. I mean, <laughs> seven songs, but they're all classics. Oh fuck yeah. They're all classics. Crown for Kings, Sunday School, Dirty Harry, uh, Took My Money to the Plugs House, 18 Wheeler, 5 to 50. 5 to 50 is one of my favorite Benny the Butcher song. Uh, when 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 that album came out, again, that's another Benny the Butcher CD I have that's all fucking destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 Wheeler featuring Pusha T. I listened, that was the song my most played song in 2019 you remember when he came out with the push a t song we were we were losing our shit like a benny the butcher with push a t on the same song we're like it, oh it, 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 it felt like i found the love of my life <laughs> and i wanted to get married to her immediately immediately it was it was just like another like it was like the another phenomenon happened it's mm. like it was just I I didn't I didn't understand what I was listening to produced by DJ Shea by the way. I did not know what the fuck was happening. I felt like I was in a it, it was I was just continuously dreaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 18 Wheeler, you just said produced by uh DJ uh, um DJ Shea but the 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 beat that he picked was different. I didn't expect him to rap on that. Right? A beat like that? Fucked up. It fucked is really good beat with Pusha. Oof. Whatever. So yeah, that was my number four. Uh we're at number three. Yes, sir. Tana Talk Four. Wow. Yep. That's just Alchemist Derringer. The Alchemist Derringer. Alchemist Derringer gave him a really good body of work in production. Was yes. able to make him shine. I don't think he should have started off with the J. Cole song. That kind of really, I don't know. It just was a weird placement for that song. It should have been middle of the album. But anyways, that's just me being me. But Back to back with Stove God. Fuck. Ooh. Weekends at Perry's with oh! James. Wait, wait a second. Tyson versus Ali. Uh, wait a second. Billy Joel, Guerrero. Oof. Guerrero, West Side Gun. Yeah. But, but the song on there. Is Uncle Bun with 38 Spesh. Yeah. Great song. Um, My number three, Burden of Proof. Burden of Proof to me. It's, I love that album. Really love that album. That album is, that album actually is my number six. I was, I was, you know, when is your first like mainstream album? It's always like a stress to it for me as I find that like, oh, no, let's not change him too much. And I think he did the exact change it that he need to do without mo moving too much uh, of what he used to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that album, Burden of Proof. Oh, he did a great it grew job. On me. It grew on me, too. The first song, the intro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Burden of Proof is, uh, yeah, it's uh, one of these nastiest songs. The song with Freddie Gibbs on there, this like, Oof. He, yeah, 
unfortunately uh with the other stupidity that's going on but anyways but like that was and the the beats that were chosen that was yeah. 2003 2002 Rockefeller style mm -hmm. beats and i'll give you my number two right away it's time talk four mm -hmm. time to talk four for me is number two. Oh, What's you your get, number two i thought it was me next okay whatever uh yeah, but you, we talked about the album already plugs i met the plugs i met oh uh, yeah oh, number wow. two plugs i met man wow is just here i just put out tana talk for three i'm gonna give you the plugs i met and you're just gonna that's just basically like getting a super uh, like a sweet chin music and fucking just being put out cold it was just mm -hmm. fucking it's just great black thought the rj Payne verse on there the 38 yeah. special uh, verse on Jada. there jay the kiss come on yeah no that's uh and the rollout for that album was fucking great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again. Yeah, that's a great. So number one. Number one. What 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 else could it be? Tana Talk 3. I see yes. Look, I'm going to say it. In five to ten years, people are going to go back to that album and they're going to put it at a different level. That's a and classic album. That is a classic album. That is top five of the last decade. From twenty ten or twenty this is I don't know how the decade was. Twenty ten, twenty twenty. Okay. That's yeah. top five. Yeah, that came out in twenty twenty eighteen already. Mm hmm Twenty eighteen already. Jesus. I have the hoodie somewhere. I have two of the hoodie, to be honest. Yeah. By the way, if anybody wants to buy one of the Tana Talk three hoodies, uh I have two of the blue one. Uh, just hit me up uh, on uh, Instagram or on YouTube. I'll sell it to you for a very reasonable price. Uh, that hoodie that I never wear, by the way, also, because I just don't want to get it dirty. Yeah, but... you just bought two and you have... No, you bought one, you got two, and you just <laughs> leave them there. <laughs> but that album, man, oof, I'm going to tell you that people got to start putting that shit up there with the fucking clips and the reasonable doubts, man. Just saying that that album hits differently. That has, that album has classic just, after classic song. There's, there's no now mix. one bad fucking song on there. End of story. Don't argue with and me. And what's what's your 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 top three best song on here? If you oh! have to choose three, uh, Jesus Christ! I'll give you give me a top three. At the top of my head, I, I'm actually losing a lot of brain cells lately. So mm -hmm. I would say Rubber Bands and Weight for sure. Mm, yeah. Broken Bottles. Like, yep. let's be honest. Like, that's some of the best fucking music put together. Like, mm -hmm. Broken Bottles. Yeah. If the, if I see ever, if I ever see Benny live and doing his own show and he plays both those songs, I'm starting a mosh pit. But it's gonna be like a hardcore mosh pit where I'm just throwing yeah. fists everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna. I probably could. I could probably wrap you all of broken bottles. Uh, and I would probably say. I don't know, man. Ninety-seven hole. Yeah, I'd like Joe Pesci thirty-eight. I don't know, man. All seventy. Come on. All seventy. Oh That's God. my song. What? That's not me. It's me. It's all seventy. Rubber bands and weight. And uh, 97 Hove. Such, for me. We, Such you, a we, classic. We gave our, our uh, yeah, we did give our score for Benny the Butcher. Uh, yeah. Before we get up out of here, uh, anything else you want to throw at me? There was a, a small EP that came out ah. from, from Fonte. Oh, yes, three songs. No, four songs. Pacific Time 2. Did you yes. like it? I liked it, but that is not what I expected. It, it, it's more of a singing. A, it's more singing than songs. It's really a good, great mood. Great mood. Um, it's just four songs, but that I mean, it's different. It's different. He has a great voice. I like his voice when he's singing. If I'm not gonna play it back, I, I don't know. I might put one or two songs in the playlist for the store. You know, so I listen to the store. When, it's uh, true. You put, yeah, that's good. That's good for the store. Exactly. So I have some Fonte on the on the store, but that's pretty much it. Um, uh, Jay Skies is coming out with a new album. He came out mm -hmm. with that mixtape. 
uh, that you could buy on on one of his websites. Uh, what else came out? Maze Overlay uh, came out with, uh, I think it's Etern yeah, Eternal Summer uh, ju on July 17th that we didn't talk about. And 84 Testarossa uh, that came out as well uh, on August 6th. Maze Overlay just continuously putting out solid bodies of work. Uh, go check it out. You know who's coming out an album on Friday? Well, this comes out on Monday, but the Friday that just passed. Gucci Mane mixtape with DJ Drama. Wow. I'm going to press play. Oh, the new, there's a new Logic album that came out that a lot of people are, are saying is really good. Yeah, yeah. When Logic he has comes DJ out, every... Drama. I think he has DJ Drama all over it. Every, every time Logic comes out, everybody says... The a Logic album is great. It's good. You press play on it, and you're just like, "This is fucking terrible music." God damn it! I I I, I never listened to him, so I I cannot tell you. But... Uh, anything else you're listening to? What's in your heavy rotation? On the heavy rotation is pretty much. Uh, I have another album, uh, a French Canadian one, Saint Sucre with Monkey. Uh, just released a, a, an album that I enjoy. I really enjoy actually. It's a really good concept. It's them making the album, but being distant at the same time. So they're away, and they're making the album while they're away. So every song, when it ends up in their interludes and in the outro, there's always him them speaking of like, hey, yo, I got you, like on the phone, and like, yo, I just got your verse, da, 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 and then they pass it that. Oh, yo, I got this singer for the next song. Okay, I'll send you the instrumental. And then it's really fun. It's really fun. And Monkey... He's like, uh, he's like the most deaf. So, you, him making a music with a brand new guy that's another come up, it's crazy. It's really sick. Uh, I've also been listening to an insane amount of wrestling music. Uh, wrestling music, huh? I've been just listening to the Roman Reigns theme song <laughs> continuously. We should do. We should do a top. We should do a all time entry songs. For wrestling? Yeah, with the guys. Oh, I could tell you my top five immediately. Yeah? Well, number it? one number one's on my shirt. Sh yeah, Shawn Michaels. But he had a good one. Roman Reigns man coming back. Oof. That's no theme but song. no but uh, yeah, that you like oh! that, that that much? Man, go watch his go watch him on SmackDown last Friday. And and he's using a different theme song, like it's the same uh, song just made with an orchestra. Mm -hmm. Fucking great! Fucking oh great. yeah, okay. You need to you need to get back into wrestling, but WWE wrestling. When uh, when is gonna go on Netflix? You're gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it more often. Yeah. Are you? Because I don't uh, have cable. So. Are you coming to watch All In? When is that? Sunday the twenty fifth. Yeah, I can. Uh, but we're 100%. we're going we're gonna go to Thomas's house. I can, yeah. Uh, all in, baby. Uh, before we get up out of your thoughts on Roman Reigns. I have no thoughts on Roman Reigns. I don't. Roman watch Reigns right now is probably the biggest wrestler in the whole entire world. Yeah, but you drink the Kool Aid, the uh, the WWE Kool Aid. They they gave it to you. And you drink Why? it. Why? He is the most over. Yeah, but probably. I don't watch it, so I can't tell. You. I went. I just bought two last Roman. Last time I watched. Last time I watched, he was hated. But that's the whole point. He was the most hated to the most over. Mm -hmm. He left. People hated him for years. For his championship reign, people hated him. He left mm. for four months. He lost the belt, yeah. left for four months, and now everybody wants him back. The hero. At SummerSlam, they, the whole 57,000 people were standing up going like this when wow. he came back. It was a great um, great uh, episode, by the way. Oh, I, for, thank you. 153, I think it was. Something like for that. For the SummerSlam. Great episode. And I agree with Cavallo 100%. On that CM Punk match, yeah, it's, but you just despise CM. Punk. It was such a bad match. I cannot believe people defended. Oh, but his story. 
we all know the story, but it's still just a, a little friendship. It just go over it, bro. Oh my! I have God. one here, huh? Oh, it's true. I know what I want. I I know what to take from you when. Uh... My daughter made it for me, so she said, yeah. "Daddy, here's your here's a bracelet, so I'm never gonna take it off unless they chop off my arm." So you're uh, gonna have to go and fight Drew yourself. You I'll might take it from you. I'd probably win, anyways. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, by the way. Before we get up out of here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please subscribe and like right in the comments. We appreciate everybody who's subscribed already, who comments, who has conversations with us. We appreciate you. We appreciate all the listeners. We appreciate everybody that tunes in weekly, uh, every second week, every third week, monthly. If you like wrestling, if you like hip hop, whatever, we just... We greatly appreciate you. So thank you very much for supporting. Uh, we bring you nothing but the best in hip-hop and in wrestling. Uh, Malenko, if you're not down with that, we got two words got for you. Oh, words. wait. Wait. Danielson Show, Montreal, yes. August 23rd. I don't know where that where it's at. Check it out. If you're in Montreal, if you want to come down to Montreal, Daniel Sun concert in Montreal. I am excited. It's not going to get canceled like the fucking Conway show got canceled. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Okay? Last fuck's minute. Sake. Last minute. Hey! I'm, I'm talking with Danny. I'm talking with people. Yeah, we're going to meet each other up at the concert. Blah, blah, blah. What time are you going to get there? 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Email concert canceled. Postponed till September. There you go. Shit. But if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much, everyone. Peace. Peace.